The New York Giants finally benched Daniel Jones, and it was the best move they could make. That and more on today's edition of Locked On NFL. The new Locked On NFL. The madman Tyler Rowland is your double shot of NFL espresso. With the Locked On local experts on every major story. Get ready, Roland is revving up. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Football fans, welcome into the Locked On NFL Podcast, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with help from our local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. Make sure to listen to every episode of Locked On NFL on Amazon Music, I am your host, the madman, Tyler Rowland, joined today as I am every Tuesday by Locked On NFL expert Lauren Cox. On today's show, I'm going to talk about the Houston Texans beatdown of the beat-up Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to tell you who the offensive rookie of the year is so far, but we will start with the big news in the big city, the New York Giants bench Daniel Jones, and it's the right move. Yeah, it seems like this should have been coming a lot sooner than this, but everyone wants to hold on to their priors and try and protect their jobs, I guess. Yeah, 100%. Before we get into it, I do want to thank you for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day and for being an everyday you're here with us at the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You could start the second half of the NFL season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We're going to throw it to the GOAT, Patricia Trainer from Locked On Giants, to break down the big news. The decision is in, and the New York Giants are benching starting quarterback Daniel Jones in a move that was largely anticipated. Jones, a six-year veteran, has struggled with his consistency, particularly since returning this season from a torn ACL suffered last year. The team is currently in the midst of a five-game losing streak and is looking for a spark these remaining seven games. That spark, they hope, will come in the form of Cedar Grove, New Jersey native Tommy DeVito, who will get the start ahead of the veteran Drew Locke when the Giants host the Bucks on Sunday. Why Locke over DeVito? Two possible reasons. One, Locke was injured for much of the preseason, which is believed to have slowed down his progress in the Giants' offense. Second, DeVito has shown he's Mr. Cool under pressure, having demonstrated that last year as an undrafted rookie who was pressed into emergency action when the two quarterbacks in front of him, Jones and Tyrod Taylor, went on IR with injuries. DeVito went on to win three straight games for the Giants, including one in primetime against the Packers. We'll have much more on this story in the days to come, so be sure to follow for all our coverage. So I'm going to get into the decision to go with Tommy Cutlets over Drew Locke in just a second, but where I want to start is the Giants can say this is for football reasons, and look, Danny Dimes not playing great football. I get it. But he is 100% the best quarterback on this team. And this is absolutely for monetary reasons. This is the same thing that happened to Derek Carr in Vegas. This is the same thing that happened to Russell Wilson in Denver. He has guaranteed money on his deal next year if he gets injured. The Giants are ready to cut ties and are going to get rid of him after the year. And they cannot risk having him get injured and then being locked into that guaranteed money next year. They can say it's for football reasons. Blah, 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 blah. This is for monetary reasons. And you know what, Lauren? I agree with them. I don't care if it's for monetary reasons. I wouldn't care if the Giants came out and admitted why they're doing it. They can't for NFLPA reasons. They can't look like they're doing that on purpose. But I love the decision. It's the right move for their franchise. If you're ditching the guy, which you should, then this is the right move. So I have no problem with what the Giants are doing here. I feel like if I'm Brian Dable, like... I'm trying to save my job too here. And so if I, is is Daniel Jones, the quarterback that gives me the best chance to win football games and try and show something on offense to say, Hey, I should stick around as the head coach. I mean, I don't know that Tommy DeVito is the one who gives you a better chance, but I can understand saying, Hey, this isn't working and we need to try something different. And there've been at least flashes from drew lock that you thought maybe could be a spark there, but we're not getting those right now. Yeah, and that's a perfect segue into the decision to go with Tommy DeVito. Tommy Cutlets, baby. Look, let's call this what it is. The Giants are tanking. 
They're tanking the season. They are intentionally playing the worst quarterback on their roster, not only because it helps them lose, but because he's a local guy. He's got that New York flair. He's got the crazy agent with the hat on, all of that. And that is going to be endearing to the fan base. If you're going to suck, at least be exciting. And I think that what you're talking about with Brian Dable, it's just because he's a scapegoat now. Like, he, he, you can look at Danny Jones or Danny Dimes and say, Daniel Jones was the problem. I'm sorry, ownership. We tried to win with this guy who we gave a contract to. It didn't work. So to save his job, he is benching Daniel Jones to say, you were the problem all along. And once we get a good quarterback this offseason, then I'll do a good job and get wins. Yeah, it's 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 a tough sell at this point, right? Like this right. was supposed to be the quarterback. Like this is what they signed him to that big contract for. Like you were the one to get this out of Daniel Jones. And so why should we then trust you with the next quarterback if you couldn't make it yes. with this quarterback that we thought could have done things? And you give him a first round wide receiver and you know the investments on the offense that never really came to fruition. If you're if you're that coach for our franchise, if I'm the Giants management, like I'm not sure that I'm sold that he should be the guy in charge of the next one. I I totally agree there, but they said, you know, they're committed to rolling with them in 2025. So if they stick to their word, that's kind of already in the books. But I do want to move forward here because we're talking about one quarterback getting benched. Now we need to move to a quarterback who came off the bench and maybe revived his career. Anthony Richardson with a clutch performance against the Jets for the Colts. Zach Hicks from Locked On Colts broke it down. And we were both kind of like, yeah, this feels very disciplinary for Anthony Richardson. And I don't know if we see him again the rest of the season. Flash forward to 24 hours later, Richardson is back as the team starter. He rolls into this New York Jets game this past weekend and puts together his career best day. I mean, he was fantastic as a passer. I mean, I, I, that's not even me just over-exaggerating. Like, he was Pretty fantastic as a passer in this one. Again, 20 of 30 for for 66.7% completion percentage, 272 yards passing, which was 9.1 yards per attempt in one touchdown through the air. Added 10 carries for 32 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. I mean, this was everything you were looking for from Anthony Richardson. I really just threw this in here, Lauren, because I want to take the opportunity to say that the Colts are bozos. Putting that kid on the bench was always a stupid decision, and it wasn't just the legs. He looked good with the legs as well, scored two rushing touchdowns, but he delivered some dimes on that final drive with two minutes left to take the lead by one point against the Jets. Like He was absolutely clutch, and, and taking a player that has as little of experience as him that's 22 years old and benching him for Flacco, it was always so, so stupid, and his performance just proves how dumb the Colts were to do that. Yeah, it, it just feels to me with him like he's going to have good games and he's going to have bad games because he's so inexperienced. Like that's yes. that's the roller coaster of a young quarterback. He's what, 11 starts in the NFL? Yeah, he'll come yep. back against the Jets and have a great game and then maybe he'll be terrible next week against the Lions and then be great against the Patriots after that and then be terrible against the Broncos. Like you're just going <laughs> to have these swings back and forth and pretending like benching him is going to, you know, solve that or reduce those swings was was foolish from the get-go. And I think that it's it's another sign that the Colts just do not understand themselves. There's a lack of self-awareness of how good their roster is, how good of a GM Chris Ballard is. Like, they see themselves as this bona fide playoff team that should be contending, and that's just not where they are because Chris Ballard sat on his hands all offseason. So, to me, it's a gross overestimation of their roster to think that they should have been playing so much better than they actually were. And, and maybe that's maybe that's what Joe Flacco revealed to them, that they thought they could go to a veteran quarterback like Flacco and say, oh, our great playoff roster should be just fine with a veteran, you know, game manager kind of quarterback yep. at this stage of the career for Flacco. And, oh, whoops, wait a minute. Maybe our roster isn't as good as we thought it is. OK, let's go back to Anthony Richardson, because at least he can kind of breathe those high swings to lift everybody up sometimes, even when he pulls them down, too. Yeah, 100%, Lauren. That's a fantastic point. With that being said, though, who is the offensive rookie of the year in the NFL? It looked like a close case, but the race is closer than ever. It's Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Z-Biotics, the pre-alcohol probiotic drink. 
by Zbiotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme that breaks this byproduct down. Just remember to make Zbiotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. I've used the pre-alcohol drink from Zbiotics and let me tell you, it absolutely worked and it allowed me to have a great Sunday breaking down all the football games. Step one, drink the pre-alcohol drink. Step two, drink responsibly. Step three, enjoy your tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use the code locked on NFL at checkout. Z- Zbiotics is back with a 100 100- percent money back guarantee so if you're unsatisfied for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked remember head to zbiotics.com slash locked on nfl use the code locked on nfl at checkout for 15 percent off today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. get ready to tackle the second half of the nfl season with FanDuel, america's number one sports book because right now New customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So, when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, you can view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Make sure that you visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Lauren, let's continue today's edition of Locked on NFL. Talked about the Giants benching Danny Dimes. It was the right decision. Talked about Anthony Richardson coming off the bench, which was the wrong decision for the Colts. But now we need to talk about some rookie quarterbacks because, man, this race for rookie of the year on offense is heating up in a major way. And my guy, uh, David Harrison from Locked On Commanders, recognized the reality of the situation. And as far as the rookie of the year NFL race, honestly, I think the last couple of weeks with Jaden's, you know, a little bit of a dip in performance. We'll get into his week 11 performance here fully in just a little bit. Uh, Bo Nix uh, has certainly been able to to do some things to turn up his own uh, candidacy. Right, I think it was expected to kind of be Caleb Williams versus Jaden Daniels entering the year. And a lot of people gave Caleb Williams the tip of the hat there. Uh, but Bo Nix has, you know, somewhat quietly, but almost not quietly, really helped the Denver Broncos. Uh, do things that they didn't, nobody expected them to do. I mean, they're only one game back of the Washington Commanders. If you look record to record, the Washington Commanders seven and four, the Denver Broncos are now six and five after shellacking the Atlanta Falcons 38 to six on Sunday. Bo Nix dropped 307 yards on the Falcons head, four touchdowns, a 145 passer rating. I mean, Bo Nix had an absolutely fantastic performance against the Falcons. He's played very well over the last month, like David explained. I do want to do a little rundown here with you, Lauren. Player A, 2,200 passing yards, 14 passing touchdowns, 300 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns, six turnovers. Player B, 2,300 passing yards, 10 passing touchdowns, 500 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns, and four turnovers. Player A is Bo Nix. Player B is Jaden Daniels. And I got to tell you, that is way closer than I even expected. So at this point, with where they're at, I think Jaden Daniels is still the offensive rookie of the year. But Bo Nix is in a position where a strong close to the season could win him that award. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think Jaden Daniels is falling victim to the, the Cliff Kingsbury curse where every single season, whether it's yep. been with Arizona or Texas Tech or wherever he's been, USC, they start out really well for the first five, six, seven, eight, nine games of the season. And then everything drops off from there. And if if they can't right that ship in Washington, the offensive rookie of the year award is going to slip right through Jaden Daniels' fingertips. I just don't know that Bo Nix is going to be able to sustain 300 yards and four touchdowns every week like he did against <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons either. Right. 
is there is there any room for Brock Bowers to be a tight end as an offensive rookie of the year? He, he has Short the second performance of any player in football. He's top 10 in yards, leads all tight ends in every major stat. Like, I don't think they'd give it to him, but I don't love the way the quarterbacks are playing overall right now unless Bo Nix really takes off from here or Daniels turns things around. I think that Brock Bowers is an excellent entrance into the conversation. Yeah, it, it will depend on how the commanders finish out the season. They've had a little bit of a lull here, but I mean, they played the Steelers and then they played the Eagles, two of what the top seven, top eight teams in the NFL, hands down. So a really tough stretch once they, I mean, I know they play the Titans here in a couple of weeks. Jane Daniels will probably look like prime Mike Vick mixed with baby Jesus in that game. So that'll help him out. But yeah, I, 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 th I think that there's a great chance that Jaden Daniels does bounce back at least here. Yeah. And they got the Saints. Falcons and Cowboys are through their last four games. That's a pretty good way. Like if, if voters, if offensive rookie of the year voters remember, wow, he started really hot and then he, he finishes really hot with three or four good yeah. games. That's probably enough to take the cake. Even if the middle brought him back down to where Bo Nix is. Yeah, that's a great point. A strong finish is what's going to get this, get this job done. And Daniels has set himself up to be able to have one of those, especially with that schedule. I do want to ask you, Lauren, I'm sorry to do this, but I know where this while going. we do have you on, how did Caleb Williams look under Thomas Brown? It it was a noticeable turnaround, right? They definitely pl placated things to fit him better than they had been under Shane Waldron. And I think, you know, in a vacuum, you could talk yourself into, oh, maybe Caleb Williams can climb back into this race because they, right. they did seem to solve some real problems there. But the issue is their schedule. I mean, it's Vikings, Lions, 49ers, Vikings, oh. Lions, Seahawks, Packers. I mean, those are maybe oh all. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's five division games and two other probable playoff teams. Like, if they had some weak games on the schedule, maybe Caleb could have a 300-yard performance in there and, and get back into this race, but he's right. going to have to uh, fight tooth and nail to even try and get to 500 this season. Yeah, and even if they play well, or even if he plays well, they're probably not going to win the majority of those games, and we know QB wins is still a major factor in a lot of this stuff. So uh, great, great analysis there looking at the top three uh, rookie quarterbacks. I would have I would have wanted to make an argument for the rookie wide receivers like Malik Neighbors or Brian Thomas, but they're not getting good enough quarterback play here to right. carry them forward. Like they they were on that on track, but we talked about Daniel Jones getting benched. We've seen Mac Jones a lot in Jacksonville. Like some of these wide receivers are having good years, but the numbers just aren't quite going to be there to to win the award. That's where I'm I'm Team Brock Bowers again. Yeah, well, he's been the best receiving threat. I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr. has been coming along too lately with the Cardinals' ascension, but had a slow start to the season. I also want to say, I mean, Joe Alt has been yeah. a Pro Bowl-level player at right tackle, and it's a little bit of home cooking, but J.C. Latham has been fantastic for the Tennessee Titans as well. So this entire offensive rookie class looks phenomenal right now. Has there ever been an offensive lineman to win AP Rookie of the Year? I'm, I'm pulling up the most recent stats. Everyone <laughs> no in the last way. 20 years has been quarterback, wide receiver, or running back. And I'm yeah, not there's there's just no that. way, dude. There's just no way they're gonna they're gonna do that. But hey, on this podcast with me as host, I'm gonna show some love to the Hog Mollies up front. Well, and and noticeably there, uh, no tight ends on this list either. All I'm seeing is running backs, wide receivers, quarterbacks. I think way back in the 80s, there were like in the 70s, there were fullbacks when fullbacks meant something, but no real right. tight ends on the list either. So maybe Brock Bowers is doesn't have such a good shot after all. Well, Lauren, you are a master of a mock campaign, so maybe you get that uh Brock <laughs> Bowers video going here soon. But with that being said, we are going to move forward here. There was a football game on Monday night. Not very. Yeah. Uh, Good football game, but one nonetheless. We are going to break down the Texans' beatdown of the injured Dallas Cowboys. It's Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Rewards. Listen up, renters. Ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments? I've been there. You just watch your money vanish into thin air. It's time to turn the rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That's where Built, B-I-L-T, rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as a neighborhood rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent every month. Pay your rent and watch the Built points roll in. You can use those points to jet off on a dream vacation. 
put your points towards a flight or a hotel stay with 500 plus airlines, 700,000 plus hotels and properties. You can also use your points to book fitness studio classes, redeem them toward a future rent payment. They're designed to meet your lifestyle. Earn points by paying your rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL. That's J O I N B I L T dot com slash locked on NFL. Make sure that you use our URL so they know that we sent you. Join built.com slash locked on NFL to start earning points with your rent payments today. All right, Lauren, we are going to cap off today's edition of Locked On NFL. We talked about some benching situations on the bench, off the bench. Daniel uh, Daniel Jones, I just want to call him Danny Dimes so much because it's such a fun nickname that I don't even like saying Daniel Jones, man. It's just despicable, really. But we talked about the Offensive Rookie of the Year award, and there are a lot of contenders outside quarterback that deserve some love, no doubt. But we'll finish with this Monday night football game. The Houston Texans just murder the Dallas Cowboys. And quite honestly, we're lucky someone wasn't murdered before the game, as the Cowboys tried to open their stadium roof and a huge piece of sheet metal fell from the ceiling. I mean, the Cowboys are seriously lucky someone wasn't killed by a piece of sheet metal that big falling that far. And then a second piece fell and they had to bolt it to the rafters so that it was secure during the game because they couldn't get it down in a timely manner. An absolute disaster for the Dallas Cowboys in every way. And my guy Landon McCool of Locked On Cowboys talked about exactly that. Another home game, another two-touchdown blowout loss for the Dallas Cowboys. Hi, I'm Landon McCool with the Locked On Cowboys podcast. And despite a valiant effort through most of this game, by the time the fourth quarter rolled around and Cooper Rush was strip-sacked, Tyler Guyton picked up the ball, and then he got strip-sacked, and then that ball was returned for a touchdown to put it at 27-10 at that point in the game. Uh, that's when the game's wheels just completely fell off. Uh, Dallas could not hold on and, and, and couldn't keep up with the scoring that Houston was able to do against this depleted Dallas Cowboys defense. And then the injury started to happen on the offense, as at some one point the Cowboys were down to their 7th and 8th offensive linemen uh, as Zach Martin and Tyler Smith were both injured. Just another blowout loss at home, another two-touchdown-plus loss. There's lots of things to talk about, including injuries and ineptitude. Make sure you check us out on the Locked On Cowboys podcast this week to talk all about it. So, look, uh, me and Luke Braun held a funeral for a few teams last week, quite a few teams, if I'm honest. And obviously the Cowboys were in there, and that is why, Lauren, I will say again, like I said last week, play Trey Lance. This is the perfect opportunity to play him and see what you can get. You're losing by double digits every game. You're not going to win anything with Cooper Rush. Mike McCarthy, let it go. If I'm Jerry Jones, this is one time where I will say he needs to pull some owner interference and tell Mike McCarthy, you're playing Trey Lance. You've already lost your job. We'll let you finish throughout the season. Play the young guy and see what you have, or at least take the opportunity to develop him so that you can flip him in the all season. They have to play Trey Lance. But can't you already hear Jerry Jones saying, oh, you know, Cooper Rush threw for 350 yards and threw it for a 64 yard touchdown or whatever that breakaway oh touchdown God. was? Like, he, he sure does give us a good chance to win. He takes care of the football. You know, I, I, I have to imagine, like, if I'm Mike McCarthy, I, I'm on the hot seat, right? Like, I'm feeling like my job's yeah. in trouble. So if I thought Trey Lance was going to give me a better chance to win, I, mean, I, I would think I would pull the trigger on that. Like, are they just seeing Lance at practice and saying, he just really in it, so we got to go with Cooper Rush? Or is there is there a Jerry Jones top-down mandate that says, no, Mike McCarthy, you're not allowed to make that quarterback change. you got to make it work with Cooper Rush. Because either way, it feels terrible. Yeah, it's awful. I mean, this is going to be – a very bad finish to the season and the Cowboys are getting banged up everywhere else. I just uh, like they have to have some sort of excitement to sell the fans. And we know that Jerry Jones thinks about that stuff and playing Trey Lance at least gives them a spark of life, you know, not to hate on rush hour or anything, but Lance can at least move around and, you know, has more physical traits. Like I just, I don't understand the point here. Again, it feels like a lack of self-awareness to me from the organization. 
And like, it would make more sense if they were like running the ball pretty well, or like playing some defense where you just said, Terrible okay, run game. Yeah, like if if you if you just needed Cooper Rush to kind of game manage and hey, just don't turn the ball over and we can kind of try and fight an ugly game to victory, okay, you could you could sell me on saying hey, he's maybe more stable than Trey Lance, but when you can't do anything well, what do you got to lose by changing quarter? What are you going to lose by more touchdowns? Oh darn, that sucks. Yeah, exactly. It just it, it's just a terrible situation in Dallas. I do want to make this one point though. The Houston Texans go to seven and four, and they won handily. But again, it's not that clean. Like, they made some big mistakes. They beat up on a crap team. I don't think that Houston, I still don't think that Houston is playing very good football right now. Is that not a sign of encouragement for them that you can say, hey, they, they beat the Cowboys 34-10, not playing very well, so that, hey, you know what? Maybe if they start to play well, they can actually really make some noise. Yeah, but they got to start to play well eventually. They have not played very good football in route to the – and we could say, like, yes, it's good. You beat the Cowboys, and you should beat bad teams by a lot and all of that. Yes, 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 that's true. But they have Super Bowl aspirations, and the way that they've played through the first 11 games, they don't stand a chance to make it to the Super Bowl with this level of play. Well, I look at them, and they got Tennessee next week and then Jacksonville yes. and then a bye week. And okay, maybe you can kind of build something there and then come out of the bye and there's your, your playoff start. You got Dolphins, Chiefs, Ravens. And we'll know entering the playoffs if Houston has any sort of hopes of going far or if they're just going to crash and burn and you know be a regular season team that doesn't really make any waves in the playoffs because C.J. Stroud's got to get back to playing C.J. Stroud football. Yeah, 100%. Well, that's the problem is I worry about that offensive line, man. Like that offensive line is not playing anywhere near the level it was playing last year. You can see that CJ Stroud has been affected by that offensive line play. And I think they're vulnerable in the secondary as well. Like with Will Anderson out, they aren't as dominant in the pass rush. They're still very good in the pass rush. Make no mistake about it. But they aren't as dominant. And I feel like the secondary is a little susceptible if they aren't as dominant in the pass rush. So though I'm just tracking, tracking the pass protection, tracking the secondary for the Texans, because those are two big places where I'm thinking, you know, they they could look kind of rough in a, in a big game scenario if they continue this way. Yeah, you hope that maybe getting a little healthier could help a little bit, but I don't know that it's just going to magically fix fix all those problems all, all at once. I mean, they got to – you like to think that somebody like D'Amico Ryans can – come up with some, some different ways to free up pass rushers and get more creative up front, whatever it's going to take to, to work. Cause they've got talent. They've got guys you like yeah. there. It's just a matter of figuring it all out and, and getting everybody back on the field together close to a hundred percent. Well, Lauren, I don't know who's hoping for that. I'm not hoping for it, especially not this upcoming week. All jokes aside, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's edition of Locked on NFL. We covered quite a bit. Uh, tomorrow, the brain, Luke Braun, will be back, and we will have our discussions looking forward to next week. But for me, your host, the madman, Tyler Rowland, and my impeccable co-host, Lauren Cox. That's going to do it for our show today. Thank you for tuning in. Get subscribed. Stay subscribed. It's your team every day here at the Locked On Podcast Network. It's Locked On NFL. And as I tell you guys every episode, stay safe out there.